Okay, so um, let's turn the lights down a little bit. We're getting into a new system, um, which is that of bone, uh, the skeletal system. Um, and bone is, um, you know, pretty much the hardest material in your body, it is. Um, and it's made of a couple different things. One which we're familiar of, collagen, right, which is one of the fibers found in cartilage. Um, it's very abundant in actually lots of different connective tissues in your body. Um, and also mineralized salts. So together they form this very strong um, material that it forms your bone. Uh, apart, they wouldn't do very well. Okay, so the mineral mineralized salts um, bring uh, the rigid structure, and the collagen um, allows for um, tensile strength. Okay, so these big white fibers are able to resist twisting and allows for uh, flexibility. But by itself, collagen would be too squishy. Okay, so you add these mineralized salts on top of it, um, or actually within it, and it gives it a hardness and a rigidity with that compact tensile strength to form bone. Yes? Is that what forms the term mineralized bone? So mineralized bone, the mineralized is not the collagen part. It is actually, so we're going to talk more about this, um, a, a crystal structure called hydroxy, it's no, apatite. Which the chemical formula for hydroxyapatite is calcium and then somebody put the OH on the end here. It's calcium 5, PO4, 3, and an OH. Okay, so the minerals in there are what? phosphorus and calcium, okay? So these are vital elements that you need to have in order to form bone. If you don't have enough of each, your bones will not form properly and you'll have weak and brittle bones. Okay, but this is, uh, this is also what forms the hardness of your teeth, okay? So why your teeth are so hard is hydroxyapatite. Yes? Uh, generally, that's because of um, a growth hormone, a hormone response, what I'm referring to, such as in gigantism or acromegaly. Um, but yeah, it's not that you have too much. You can just flush these salts out um, through water. They're water soluble. Um, so you can't get too, or your body regulates if you have too much. Um, but if you have too much bone growth, bone spurs, or more like growth um, abnormalities, those are generally caused because hormones are causing too much growth in bone. Um, okay, so where do you get calcium in your body? Where do you get it from? Um, I want, I'm going to want you guys to take a minute or two and look up, you know, where does it come from? Or what are, or let's answer this generally, where do you get calcium? Your diet, okay? So what are foods that are high in calcium? Milk is one of them, but there are other foods as well. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes, look up what are calcium rich foods. Okay, generally, right, green vegetables. Kale, Kale, spinach, leafy greens, leafy greens broccoli, celery. Uh, I don't know about celery. 
Calcium, you can get calcium from supplements. Okay, almonds, oranges. Okay. Amaranth. <laughs> Tofu. Tofu. All right, good. We got a good list. You guys are missing a big one, though. We got dairy. Dairy. Beans. Okay. How about meat, right? All right, meat is generally high in calcium. What's that? Meat. Meat. Yeah. All right. In fact, if you were going to rank these, dairy and meat would be on the highest, okay? So if you eat meat and you drink milk, eat cheese, you're getting it constantly. These other ones, vegetables, almonds, others, they have calcium in them, but not as much as meat. So um, if you don't eat meat, or if you are lactose intolerant, you might have to eat more vegetables or something. All right? Yeah, all right? All right, next question. How does this relate to your integumentary system? How does this relate to something we've already talked about? Okay. What does vitamin D do for you? It helps you absorb calcium. So you could be eating all of these things, right, constantly. But if you don't get vitamin D either in your diet or through sunlight, it's just going to flush right through you. Okay? Um, generally, uh, you don't worry about, the, is anyone worried about calcium deficiency? Is this one of the things that keeps them up at night? Yeah. You are? No. Just kidding. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you don't have to have sunlight. You can also have it dietary. Yeah. It keeps you up at night? Okay. Yeah, this is not something you guys deal with much at your age. But the older you get, the, um, the harder it is for your body to absorb calcium for some reason. So, especially in women who are postmenopausal. Okay? So for some reason, the hormone, when their hormones change, their ability to um, absorb calcium is deficient. And so they may have to take supplements um, or eat more foods that are calcium rich. Um, and if not, they can, they can um, develop osteoporosis, right? So not enough calcium. Okay, and that literally means, osteoporosis literal, literally means <laughs> porous bone. So where you would have nice, thick, healthy structures of um, bone material, if you're osteoporotic, it's withered and everything is smaller and there's more space between your bony structures and thus they are weaker and more apt to being broken. Yes? The last night, um, you mentioned it. All right, so now we're going to go in the microscopic structures. We've got four different types of bone cells. Do you guys remember these? Okay. We'll start with osteoprogenitor cells. Or osteogenic cells, same thing. Um, and these are our precursor cells. Yeah, they're like stem cells, but they've already differentiated into a bone cell. So they're an osteo 
progenitor cells. So, Uh, you can also, uh, synonymous osteogenic cells means the same thing. Okay, they can become osteoblasts. All right, and I remember the osteoblast has a B in it. So osteoblasts build bone. That's it. And once an osteoblast is mature, it will mature into an osteocyte, which literally means bone cell, right? And so what happens is an osteoblast will secrete bone matrix called osteoid. Eventually it will surround itself with osteoid that will calcify after the hydroxyapatite goes in there and builds the crystal structure around the matrix. And then it basically traps itself. Once it's trapped by bone, then it becomes an osteocyte. And we'll, we'll do a, a figure in a minute. Which so, shows this. So many osteocytes that are clumped together that forms the hard dense bone. Well, the osteocytes, yeah, are surrounded by dense bone. We'll do that in a minute. Yeah. So um, talking about the osteoprogenitor cells, those create all of these, right? It's like those are like the, the building blocks, pretty much the osteoblast and the osteocytes, right? Right, but an osteocyte is an osteoblast first. Okay, which so is an osteoprogenitor one, first. Two, two, three. Okay, got it. Yeah. Double All right, and then our last cell are osteoclasts. which uh, eat bone away. They dissolve bone. I was trying to think of something that starts with a C, but I couldn't. <laughs> corrode, there you go. OK. That's a great one. All right, they corrode bone tissue. Okay, um, but they, uh, these are derived from white blood cells. So they aren't derived from osteoprogenitor cells. They're deri derived from a completely different um, group of tissue, the blood, which makes sense, though, because that's what white blood cells do. They go in and they surround organisms and digest them. So it's doing the same thing just with your bone. Okay? And because of, we think of bones as being just these, you know, very stiff and immovable structures in our body, but they're actually more fluid than that. They are constantly actually changing in shape depending on the pressures that are exerted on them. And so you're going to have these, all these different types of cells in different amounts depending on what's going on in the bone tissue. So for example, do we have any, we have some baseball players in here, right? We've got, uh, do we have any tennis players in here? Okay. <laughs> we have any soccer players in here? There you go. All right. What's that? Marbles? Narbs? What is narbs? Okay, not. <laughs> all right. In all these sports, you have a dominant hand or arm or foot, right? Or leg, arm or leg, right? If you were to do a cross section of your arm, so just slice it off, right? Okay. 
And we were to look at, um, let's do Jack's legs. We're going to cut his legs off. Uh, do, you, do you kick with your right leg or your left leg? I kick with my right leg. Okay. So he's, he's right-legged. Right-footed. All right, if we were to look at his right leg as opposed to his left leg, and just the bone, just the density of the bone, his right leg would have more dense bone than his left leg. It probably isn't as drastic in soccer players since you're running around all the time anyway. But in baseball players, if you're a pitcher, your right leg is much more like, or your right arm, if you're right, throw with your right arm, is going to be much more dense in its bone structure than your left arm. Same thing with uh, tennis players. If they, you know, they, if they serve with their right arm, it's going to be much more dense. Yeah? Does that mean that their right arm is going to weigh more? Yeah. Okay. Their right arm will weigh more. If you've ever seen pictures of, and it's the same thing with the muscle surrounding it, right? So if you've ever seen pictures, you can look up pictures of uh, Federer. What's his first name? Roger Federer. Look up Roger Federer's arms, and like his left arm is like puny, and his right arm is like huge. When I set that up, his left arm is huge, and his right arm is huge. Right, so he's left, left hand. So that's the muscles, but also the bone underneath there is bigger as well. But is the bone bigger or just more dense? Like is the more dense. More so the, circum yeah, the circumference would be slightly bigger as well. Any bigger as well? Yeah. No, I'm just drawing, but yeah. Okay, so if you're ambidextrous, if you use them both the same, then they would both be bigger. Yeah. So um, Matt had a, some sort of arm thing going on, right? And he couldn't use one more. Wasn't one of your arms much bigger than the other? Yeah. So if you were able to look at the bone structure in those two bones, you would expect something similar, right? But. All right, so what's going on here is the osteoblasts are building bone where it's needed, and the, and the osteoclasts are going in there and helping reshaping bone where it's needed. So the more pressure you put on some part of your body, the thicker the bone is going to be in that part of the body. Hey, did you have a question? Ashley? Yeah, so it's like if Jack stops playing soccer and he doesn't favor his right leg anymore, like, yeah, he'll become a non-athletic regular person. Right? <laughs> and they should even out eventually, yeah. Or if he develops his left leg, which he needs to anyway, right? It's for those moves. <laughs> yeah, question? I was just going to say, with relative cell abundance, do you have more mature bone cells or bigger cells developing? I'm using my right arm. Uh, so the question was, which of these cells is more abundant? Um, in your compact bone, you're going to have more of the osteocytes, the mature cells, um, but it might be reshaping towards the outside. You'd find more of the osteoblast osteoclast there. Yeah. Good question. Okay, so those are your four cell types. This is looking at the cellular level, what's going on. Um, Oh, uh, those are, monocyte is a type of leukocyte. Leukocyte means white blood cell. Yes. Zoom out a little bit. Oh, wait. This, this just came, this just happened like five days ago. This just did. Oh, wait. Okay. So, we, we know that there are bone stem cells. Um, but we haven't been able to find specific ones, the specific type that only differentiates into bone. We know that bone tissue, along with lots of other tissue, arises from the mesenchyme, mesenchymal cells. There's lots of different tissues that can arise from there. But until just recently, we hadn't identified a bone-specific stem cell, at least one to this level. Um, as of September 20th, there was a news, so a publication. So I don't know if it was on September 20th. That's when this news article was written, but shortly thereafter. 
Um, they were able to find this in humans. So they found it in mice previous to this, found it in humans. What's significant about this is now that they've found this bone uh, stem cell, they can now use it in um, regenerative therapies, like the, what we researched before. Yeah. So like how they did the stem cells in the skin gun? Could right. Use like a, the bone stem cells in 3D print the bones? Yes, that's the exact sort of thing that they're thinking about doing. Which is, yeah, which is monumental at this point, yeah. Um, I would imagine so, yeah, but I haven't heard that. Um, but that would be a different type of tissue, right? That would be a connective tissue. Um, what's another interesting thing about it is they can induce fat cells to become these stem cells and then turn them into bones. Okay, which is kind of interesting. They've also been able to do a similar thing with skin cells and turn them into stem cells and then turn them into heart cells. So there's a lot of different things that you can do um, with this kind of technology. Anyway, so I included the link there if you want to read up more about that, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, this showed up in my Facebook feed. Um, so, Facebook to me is like working, essentially. <laughs> All right, so, um, Osteon. What is the Osteon? You guys remember? It is. It is. Um, for for certain tissues, they have what's called a fundamental unit. Not all tissues are able to break down into this just one type of repeating unit, a repeating type of thing. But an uh, osteon is a fundamental unit of compact bone. And you guys already know what these look, at, look like. You've looked at them under the microscope in lab, um, but maybe didn't understand all the different structures. So that's what we're going to go over right now. When you look at compact bone, you see all these circular, almost looks like tree rings stuck next to each other, okay? So um, let's start at the first, I'm going to use black, the first dark circle in the middle, okay? Um, what does every tissue need in order to continue homeostasis? What's that? Okay, we're just looking at the cells, though. Yeah, what would you say, Jack? I just said powerhouse of the cells. Okay, yeah, it does need mitochondria. <laughs> Think uh, bigger, though. What has to be going to a tissue in order for it to... Blood. Blood, good. All right. So in this, this is called the central canal. You have little arteries. And little veins. You also have lymph vessels. And what else might you have in there? I'll give you a hint. It's this yellow circle. Not fat. Yellow What's that? Yellow no. No. The yellow dot. The yellow circle. It's the, it's like the Not bone marrow. Side, it's like the space. Nerves. Okay, so you have little nerves going into all these little spaces, okay? All right. Um, so bone is very much a living tissue. It has a blood supply. Um, you look at a bone by itself and you think it's, it's dead, like maybe skin was, but it's not. It's, it's got a constant flow of nutrients coming in and out of there. Um, surrounding then the uh, central canal, you've got these circles, rings. 
Okay, and we call these rings concentric lamellae. Concentric means circular. But what they are, if we zoom in, did you need that word first? Okay. That's an E. Obs. Oh, just kidding. All right. <laughs> okay, so what they are, if we zoom in, is they're actually a space called a lacuna and plural would be lacunae. And what's in there is a cell. Now again, this is compact bone. So what kind of cell do you think this is? Osteocyte, good. This is already formed bone. So at some point, this was an osteoprogenitor cell that became an osteoblast that secreted the osteoid matrix. But then when it filled in with compact bone, it became an osteocyte, OK? Um, these osteocytes, uh, or these lacunae, are actually connected by these little canals called canaliculi. All right, which appear to be for osteocyte communication. So the lacunae hold the osteocytes. The osteocytes are the mature bone cells. And the canaliculi are little canals which allow for communication between osteocytes. All right, now when you get a bunch of these Um, together, you have some parts, you know, just because they're circular, they aren't going to fit together perfectly. So you'll have some areas where they don't form rings. Okay, so we'll like kind of circle this part here. And these are called interstitial lamellae. So does it yeah. tell like lamellae that just doesn't form around a central canal? Right. Okay. Yeah, so they aren't as close to the blood vessels, but they're still doing the same thing. And then there are also. Canals that run in the opposite direction. Okay, so like from this one to this one. And we'll call these Volkman's Canal. Your book has another name for them, but I can't remember exactly what it is. It starts with a P, though. Um, so that's a horizontal one. And you normally won't see these in like histological slides because you'd have to slide, slice perfectly over that horizontal one. But the central canal is going vertical. The Volkmann's canal are going at a 90 degree angle from that. That makes sense. 
but still holding the same thing, blood vessels, nerves, and uh, lymph vessels. Okay, what's interesting about these is they also, they aren't, um, they don't remain the same size. As you get older, they get smaller. So you can actually use these to age the person, um, age bone, essentially. So if you get a section of bone, you can compare the different um, size of the rings. If they have more compact, they are older. If they have less further apart, they are younger. Um, Do they know why they get smaller? Uh, I don't, but I will look it up. I do know they do get smaller though. Okay. On that, the osteon, yes. So if an osteon is um, you know, blood vessels, so it's basically all of that. Is, is one osteon would be, yeah, one circle. One circle and the Yeah. With the blood, uh, with the canals as well. <laughs> yes. So the Volkman's canals don't show up. Um, on the histology slides, because they are, they're just central canals, but they're going at a 90 degree angle. So if you have a central canal going like this, then it's going to be going in this direction. Okay. Connecting, yeah. Do you have options that face that direction as well, the same as the Volkman's canal, or? Well, yeah. No. Sorry, what's your question? No, so the osteons are all, all going to be going in the same cylinder. Yeah, with some, I mean, the, the bone is not flat, so there's some curve to it. But yeah, they'll all be essentially going in the same direction. Yes? This is actually a question from a few slides back. Um, so you mentioned... Which is, yeah, hard to understand when we haven't gone through blood cells yet. Uh, the canals between the osteocyte, osteocytes, what sort of chemical messages do they send back and forth? Um, well, it would be everything that the, um, oh, you mean between the canaliculi? Yeah. I'm not sure. And actually, I'm not sure anybody knows that yet. Um, it isn't really studied because it's so small and hard to get to. Like, what exactly is doing? And actually, they just think there is some sort of messaging going on, but. You have to, like, get a yeah. Yeah, it'd be really hard. And maybe, maybe with these stem cells, maybe you could grow them in culture and, and figure that out. Okay, so there you go. There's a PhD project for you guys. <laughs> Thanks for all your questions. I like these questions. Sorry, I don't know them all, but um, questions? Yeah, any other questions? Okay, any other questions? All right, so uh, we're going to move now into the gross anatomy looking at bone morphologies. Okay, so you've already studied a lot of the bones. You're going to study a lot more this week, of course. Um, and bone morphologies fall into five different types. All right, we have long bones. Okay, and a great example of a long bone is your femur. I put femus, which isn't real. Okay. All right, um, and these are classified according to their shape, not necessarily if they're long or, sh or you know, short comparative to each other. Um, but you do have short bones. Such as your Yeah, metatarsals. Okay, so a lot of the bones in your hand are short bones. So metatarsals are your hand bones. Okay, you have flat bones. Okay. 
okay, which are like the bones of your cranium. Okay, so you got your frontal and parietal and occipital. Those are all flat bones. You have irregular bones, such as your vertebrae and your bones in your skull that have big sinuses, like the ethmoid. Your hip can be irregular bone too. Your hip. Yep. And then sesamoid bones. which we all only have one of the patella. <coughs> all right, so um, we'll go over long bones and flat bones and the different structures within them. But know these five categories and be able to give an example of each. Okay, just like we did here. These, these five would be fine. All right, but we're going to look then at the morphology within a long bone. Okay, this is a deformed femur, okay, or femus, if you will. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is now the official name of the femur, the femus. All right. When you guys get to medical school and they say femur, just raise your hand and say, do you mean femus? Okay. Just trying to help you out. All right, long bones have different types of bone structure within them. Um, on the ends we have Two epiphyses, so if I want to make that plural, I'd make that I into an E. One epiphysis. All right? And then a diaphysis, which is the shaft of the bone. And the structure between them is called the epiphyseal line. Or epiphyseal plate. Okay, this is what <coughs> is referred to commonly as your growth plate. Okay, so your epiphyseal line is going to be cartilage that forms before the bone forms. And it'll, it'll be a, have a little cartilaginous line until you stop growing, and then it'll just be bone on bone. So it goes away after you achieve uh, or arrive at adulthood. But the epiphyses are also spongy bone. What was that line called? Epiphyseal line. So it's just epiphy epiphysis, but ep epiphyseal line, okay? Right, so the yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that cartilage or is it like nope. the just at the line? Just at the line, you've got cartilage in there. Okay. Is it always cartilage or only when you're growing? Only when you're growing. So it turns to bone. Mm-hmm. What kind of cartilage? Hyland. Okay. We'll, uh, but we'll, next time we'll go over what happens at that line and how the, how the bone grows essentially vertically um, as cartilage is laid down and then it's replaced so it turns into compact bone. Um, it turns into compact bone. Yeah, it increases the diaphysis. It grows in this direction. Okay. 
Okay, so let's see. Uh, spongy bone in the epiphysis, which this is what we were talking about before, is uh, trabiculae. Okay, essentially it is it has lots of space between the bony parts. I'm just drawing like a spider web of bony parts, okay? And what occurs here is uh, or it is filled with red bone marrow. And what occurs in red bone marrow is oops, hematopoiesis, which is obviously the formation of blood cells. Hema means blood, right? So hemoglobin, referring to that. And then poesis means like the formation of it. The trabriculae make it look all, those are all like the bony parts, and then it's filled with red bone marrow, oh, so it's all red, okay. and then what's occurring there is blood, blood cells are being made. Yeah? So the muscles contain the myoglobin, but does that mean that the muscles are also producing the myoglobin, or does that also come from the bone? So myo, um, that's a good, I think that's produced within the muscle. Yeah. But yes, trabiculae are the fundamental unit of spongy bone, which are these, you know, just the neck network of bony parts. But there's lots of space between them, unlike the compact bone, which it was mostly bony material with just some, some space. So is, what, is that why the spongy bone is porous? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the spongy bone is. Has, is poor, so lots of space. Yeah. Hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis. Nailed it. Hematopoiesis. Can you say it? Got it. Okay. <laughs> It was pretty close, though. All right. Um, the diaphysis. OK, so much more simple structure than the compact bone. Still very similar, though, to however the diaphysis, the shaft part of the long bone. Compact bone surrounding, um, instead of yellow bone marrow, red bone marrow. Yes. Yeah. So with the central canals run horizontal to the Okay, so that's looking microscopic, um, and I think you would have, uh, I can't draw it on here, I think you would be going the wrong direction. So you would cut this way, oops, this way to see osteons, that makes sense? Yeah, if you cut that way, and if you had just a thin layer, if that way, really, looking. It'd be a really <laughs> long slice. Yeah. You would see. You would see the, the central, central canals. Yes. Yeah. So they're, they're really going like towards. The right. Bone central bone. canals going this way. So you see this. Right? Volkmann's canal is going that way. Sure. You don't. You don't need to know that. Okay. But when we look under a microscope, we see the central canal. We don't see the volkmann's. Right. I think that's it. Any other questions? Okay, the worksheet has the figures from the book for you to label from compact bone, a long bone, and then five different bone morphologies. We will do a lot more physiology next time. So we did a lot of anatomy here. We're going to do some physiology stuff next time. Okay.